Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. I'm Drew Carey. It's gonna be a great show, isn't it? Are you okay there, Jim? Are you? Oh, uh oh. I'm practicing. I'm practicing my dance. Oh, it's Drew Carey. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is George Gray, the announcer from The Price is Right. And the one, the only, Drew Carey, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I was practicing my, this is my, I was practicing my Dancing with the Stars moves. <laughs> uh, yeah, in case you're uh, watching at home and you had the volume down, which I know a lot of you do. Uh, you're probably wondering, hey, did Craig get younger and better looking? No! <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. hey now! That's not what happened. It's an April Fool's gag. I'm filling in for him tonight. I'm hosting the whole show tonight by myself. Tomorrow morning, he's going to be on The Price is Right. And we got a lot great show for you tonight. Carl Reiner, Connie Schultz, Joe Jett, and the Blackhearts are here. <laughs> I think I got cars to give away. Uh, I'm so very excited to be hosting the Late Show tonight because uh, to growing up, I always wanted to be a talk show host. Then something happened to me, uh, success. <laughs> got in the way of the talk show host track. But um, today's April Fool's Day, officially, after midnight. Uh, this April Fool's prank was Craig's idea. He called and said, hey, I'll host your show if you host mine. And I was like, you got a show? And so uh, <laughs> I was shocked, right, George? I was just as shocked we as you were. We were both as shocked. Uh, no this show uh, has some great hosts uh, before me. Craig Kilborn, Craig Ferguson, now me. It's because CBS has a rule that this slot is only filled with lesbian haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, later on, future guest hosts will be uh, Patton Oswalt, Billy Idol, <laughs> Pete Rose, and uh, Rachel Maddow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, not only is it April Fool's Day, on this day, 10 years ago, Google announced their free email service called Gmail. Uh, sadly, news hasn't reached your parents yet because they still use AOL. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll, they'll see it an update on their MySpace page or <laughs> iVillage or whatever they're using. Uh, hey, I saw Noah over the weekend. There's a new movie called Noah. Uh, not as good as the book. <laughs> I, I, I asked a friend of mine to go with me. I go, you want to see the movie Noah? And he goes, don't tell me anything about it. <laughs> uh, but here's a little advice if you're going to go see that movie. Don't order a large soda if you're about to watch a two and a half hour movie about water. <laughs> it's no fun. Uh, for all you people that aren't Bible readers or don't know the story, Noah, he had a bunch of sons. Uh, Japheth, Ham, and Shem, Mo, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the big, 
One of the big Bible things happened to Noah is he had a son named Ham, and Ham uh, saw him naked once in his tent, and he put a curse on Ham. That was a big thing. Uh, last time Ham saw me naked, I was kicked out of Subway. <laughs> <laughs> last time, uh, last time a ham saw me naked, I was at William Shatner's house. Hey! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Last time a ham saw me naked, I was auditioning for Mad Men. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bill Clinton recently posed for a picture in L.A. with two women who turned out to be uh, prostitutes. <laughs> Turns out, without very smart, that can not only damage your reputation, but you can get exposed to a lot of diseases. So be more careful next time, prostitutes. <laughs> There's a minister in Colorado that says the Disney movie Frozen is encoded with secret messages to turn children gay. I don't know if it's true. I only had sex with two guys after I watched the Smurfs. <laughs> Doesn't make me gay. Keith Richards is writing a children's book. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, children's book. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called uh, Green Eggs and Whiskey. Horton hears a hallucination. Uh, one pill, two pills, red pill, blue pill. The, po the pokey little needle. Uh, Good Night Spoon. I think it's called Good Night Spoon. Oh, the places you'll snort. Uh, Toy Company is releasing a line of Barbie dolls that look like regular women, which is awesome. Maybe now they'll get the man boobs Ken. Uh, <laughs> if you wonder what man boobs, man boobs, man boobs Ken is gonna look a little something like this. And I see, there it is, man boobs Ken. <laughs> that's of course, uh, that's of course with the clothes on. If you wanna know what it looks like, the clothes off, like this. There you go, there he is. <laughs> you wanna know what kind of babes a uh, naked Drew Carey doll gets? Boom, there you go. <laughs> That's right. CBS, CBS, latest put underwear on the dolls. No! There's a lot of perverts watching TV late at night. Uh, as you know, I'm a contestant on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I've been studying dancing for years, uh, but none of it is helping me out on this show because they don't use poles. <laughs> Between Dancing with the Stars and The Price is Right, I'm seen by 15 million people a week. You add this show to the mix, 15 million people a week. <laughs> and uh, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna push Dancing with the Stars too much because on another network, because uh, while it's on, you can still flip over to CBS. They got two broke girls. It's my second favorite CBS show to masturbate to. Uh, <laughs> number one, number one, 60 Minutes. <laughs> Speaking of 60 Minutes, that's all we got. So we have a great show for you tonight. Carl Reiner's on the show. Tommy Schultz and Joe Jett and the Blackhearts. Drew Carey, guest hosting the Late Late Show. Glad you could join us. George Gray, what time is it? I'll tell you what time it is, Drew. It's time for emails and tweets. Yes. Uh, Craig always has a jingle to start out the thing. I don't want to take his jingle. Do we have a jingle of our own? You know what? We worked very hard on this one, and uh, yeah, I think everybody's going to like it. Uh, check this out. Uh, listen to it. Go, go ahead. Go. Go ahead. Stop that cover and don't look back. Here comes an email and Twitter attack. Giant freaky monsters crushing our city. It's a jumbo lizard wrecking committee. So grab your Reagan and your rocket back. And join the email Twitter attack! <laughs> wow. Did you say, uh, did you say we worked really hard on that? Stupid interns. Yeah, sorry. That was, that was a, kid in the, a kid in his basement made that for us. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Uh, <laughs> kid named Toby in his basement. Uh, first email is from a guy named Rich in St. Clair, Missouri. Hi, Rich. How you doing? Uh, dear Drew, how in the world did you and Craig meet? Uh, Christian Mingle. 
Uh, now, I, I had actually, uh, I had actually heard that it was on J Day. No, it was Christian Mingle. Oh, okay. Christian Mingle. <laughs> He's my second chance. <laughs> I wonder if that. I wonder if those two are still together for the Christian Mingle commercial. <laughs> a lot of road miles on that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, quit clinging to me. Uh, hey, uh, next email is from Sarah in Orlando, Florida. Uh, dear Drew, are you going to steal anything from Craig's set to take back to the Price Is Right? Uh, no, we only offer valuable prizes on the Price Is Right. <laughs> Not, uh, you know. <laughs> I might leave my initials in the desk or something. Uh, this is from Kathy from Medford, Oregon, just north of the California border, border Medford, Oregon. Uh, Dear Drew, how does the Late Late Show audience compare to the Price is Right audience in the studio? Uh, I don't know, let's, let's go to the tape. Very similar. <laughs> very, very Uncanny. similar. Uncanny. Uncanny. Very similar. <laughs> uh, this is from this is from Janice in Orano, Maine. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Maine. Uh, dear Drew, <laughs> is your relationship with George really close, or are you fake TV friends? We really we get along great. We're always we always uh, we go to each other's house. We go to parties together, right, George? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> We go, we've been to the movies together. And Absolutely. You couldn't be more right about any of that. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, this is from Iris in Duluth, Minnesota. Hi, Iris. She sounds like a, a, a diner waitress. Hi, Iris. <laughs> Dear Drew, what's the strangest job you've ever had? I mean, besides spinning a wheel for a living and dancing on stars or answering emails from fans, I was a busboy. For, Strangest job I ever had. For me, I think we'll it's really right. a gay robot. I, think I was a gay I, robot. Yeah. yeah, I was a gay robot for a while. We'll be right back with Carl Ryder, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Late Late Show. Uh, my first guest, I'm so pleased he agreed to do the show, is American comedy legend. I'm such a big fan. This is his latest book called I Just Remembered. It's in stores April 22nd. Please welcome Carl Reiner. I'm so excited to be here, I can't tell you. I love this picture, look at that. There's young Carl Reiner, man, look at that. You look great. So, I mean, still, it's still great. You know, it, it, I had that hair for many years until I decided to shave it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, just turned, you just turned 92 years old? Yesterday. Yesterday. Congratulations, Thank man. you. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yesterday. I, we're taping the show a little early, so I hope that's a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's what's uh, uh, any, your, your health seems good, he seems healthy. You well, know? I, knowing I was coming on the show, I wanted to be healthy. So I went Wednesday and had an endoscopy. What's an endoscopy? An endoscopy is where they put something down your throat to look in your stomach to see if there are no pits or stones in there. And they found nothing. And I'm so happy. The only thing that I say that when they put that down, it ruined my voice. I'm not, it don't sound like myself. Usually I can sing Pagliacci, recitar mentre preso dalle <laughs> Nice. I can still do it. Sounded good to me. 
As a matter of fact, there's an improvement. They did something good. Now I gotta ask you, like, uh, someone always wanted to ask you, you and Mel Brooks had this uh, thing going on. For, you guys, how long have you guys been friends? Uh, 60 years now. 60 years, you did 2000 Old Man. And so, now you used to do this thing at parties, right? Yes. How do you have a Hollywood party where they say, oh, settle down everybody, we're gonna do a sketch now with the two, how, how does that go? No, that happened that very accidentally, it was at Sid Caesar's, the first day I worked for Sid Caesar, there was Mel Brooks who was a friend of Sid's, he was not working there yet, he was standing up, and I didn't know who he was, but he was doing a Jewish pirate. <laughs> Mel was, Brooks doing a Jewish pirate? Yes, <laughs> and he was complaining, he says, you know how, how, how difficult it is to set sail today? What they're charging for sailcloth? Three dollars a yard. <laughs> he says, I can't afford to pillage and rape anymore. <laughs> anyway, first words heard out of him. The next week, the next day, I came back and I saw a thing called We the People Speak, where they recreated the news. And I decided that'd be a good sketch. And I and it didn't go, but I turned to Mel and I said, here's a man who was actually at the scene of the crucifixion 2,000 years ago. Isn't that true, sir? And he said, oh boy. That's all he said. He <laughs> said, funny. Jesus, thin lad, right? He wore sandals, walked around with 12 other guys. They always came into my store, never bought anything. <laughs> By the way, that was the first, and for the next 10 years, from 1950 to 1960, every party we went to, every place we went, they said, get up, get up, do that. Now, I asked them questions that I never knew what the answer is going to be. I could, most of the time, I've been roaring with laughter, but I, I had to know what the next answer was going to so be. So, if you were throwing a party between 1950 and 1960, yes. and you're going to, like, like Carl and Mel, yes. like, Tell her, hey, Carl and Mel's gonna be there. I'm sure well, they're gonna it, do this. It became that. It yeah. became like a, a you know, a, a Pip, Billy Rose and Big uh, um, Alan J. Learn. They gave parties so they can have us get up and entertain. You know, like when Mozart were, was. A were you kid, get, did you get like nervous doing, like knowing you had to perform at these parties? No, or just... no. It, it, I, and it was, for me, it was entertainment because I enjoyed hearing it. But the thing that was so interesting. Ten years we took, we said it's only for none, for our Jewish friends and non anti Semitic Gentiles. Because it was, <laughs> it was before, it was the, the Jewish accent was persona non grata four years after the war. You know, the Jewish I accent. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. And so we only did it for friends. And it was at a, one of these A list parties where three people came over to us. First, George Burns and says, Is that a. Is that on record? And we said, no. He says, put it on record, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Edward G. Robinson, the old great actor, said, I want to play the thousand-year-old man Mort Broadway. Make a play out of it. I'm going to play the... I said, it's 2,000. I can play any age. <laughs> I remember saying... And the third guy, bless his soul, was the great Steve Allen. Steve Allen was the, one of the first uh, yeah. like, late-night <laughs> show hosts. All you kids that are watching. Well, Steve yeah. was one of these guys who wanted to present comedy to people. Yeah, yeah. He said, fellas, I have a studio, World Pacific Jazz. If you go with your friend, the two of you, and just wail for uh, whatever you want to do. You own the record. I don't have no... He didn't want to have anything to do with it. He just wanted to get it out. Wow. We took friends for three hours. We wailed, cut it down to 47 minutes, and it became the 2,000-year-old man. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Is there a party? Uh, so Sid Caesar, I want to talk about Sid Caesar. That's how you met Mel Brooks is through Sid Caesar. Oh. For, uh, Sid Caesar just passed away. God bless him. And he was one of the rich. Thank you. One of the originators. Of that, I first met you on uh, Larry King. We were talking about Sid Caesar. Oh my God! Yeah, that's what we. That's met. where we met. And uh, Sid Caesar is one of the greats of American television. Create. Mr. Sketch Comedy, pretty much, right? He, he and uh, Saturday Night Live, all that stuff is from Sid Caesar. Right. He was the, one of the greatest, and he recently passed away. Uh, can you tell us about Sid Caesar? Any memories you have of him? Well, many, many memories. It was four, uh, actually seven years with him, and standing this close to him and seeing him work, it was, it was a gift. First of all, he was the most talented human being I've ever met. Sketch comedy, nobody ever did sketches like Sid, but he could do any accent, any... But I remember two things. 
There was a thing called Stanislavski method, right. where they did sense memory. Sense memory was picking up something and giving it heft, giving it weight, like a few... Now, this is... One day we're doing that, Sid is doing pantomimes, and we say, open a jar of olives that's difficult to open, see if there's any fun in that. And he picks up, you know, a, a piece of air, and he starts trying to open it, and, and we said, there's nothing funny there. And so he... He stops, and all of a sudden, we're, we're laughing. And he's, what are you guys laughing at? I said, you don't know what you just did? He's, what did I do? What did I do? What he did was, when we said stop, he had the lid off in his hand, sense memory. <laughs> and he didn't know it. He was thinking about now the next moment he's going to think of something. But the lid was in his hand. He, without knowing it, he closed the jaw. <laughs> And he put it down. He put it on the table. <laughs> he got it out of it. He switched. He, he closed the door, switched hands, and put it on the table. Oh, wow. Well. And Sorry that's about the olives. memory. That's the greatest. I, you know, I, honestly, I wish I could talk to you all night long. I wish I had a whole hour. We're out of time. I really appreciate you coming on the show. In my pleasure. Paul Reiner, everybody. <laughs>
No, yes, yes, we just both just read that book. You've read that? Yeah, I'm a Barbara Kingsolver fan. I am about impressed. That. That's right. But here's what he did. He signed it. You'll appreciate this because you know how we are, our yeah. people. We don't want a lot. Of, you don't like a lot of show and flim flam. He, all he wrote was Sherrod Brown, Lorraine, Ohio. He didn't sign that he was a member of Congress. Oh, I well, knew who he was. Hey, one more election, boom! You never know what's going to happen in the politician business. You keep hoping. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's great. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of his. Thank now, you. Now, uh, me too. From Cleveland, I want to show you this guy. Remember this guy? This was the guy. My mom said, if you know any boy who watches the show, you can't date him. That's really? who that guy is. The Ghoul. Yeah, this guy. His name was the Ghoul. He, he was uh, great. Yeah, he was a late uh, movie show host in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. He hosted a late night movie show in the early '70s. Yeah, and there was a he was. There was a guy named Goulardi that was right before him. Right, who came out this way. Right, and he's, we're about the same age. So like yes, our, our older brothers and sisters watched Goulardi. We watched The Ghoul. Yes. Goulardi ended up moving out here. The Ghoul took over. Uh, and uh, he, crazy, right? Every You would always watch The Ghoul. You remember ghoul. what he did with The Frog? He would yeah. he'd do these crazy things with a stuffed frog. Now, think about this. You're a, I'm a teenage girl, and I like scary movies because my mom, but we're watching it. He would take this stuffed frog, put it in a blender. Do you remember that? Yes. With the red, And then act like he's chopping it up. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> And you loved him, didn't you? I love the ghoul. See, uh, <laughs> I love the ghoul. You can see kind of how we turned did out the we, way we did. Is we it true? How we grew up. Now, is it true we went to Kent State at the exact same time? We did, and I don't think we ever met. But you no. were a Greek guy, right? You were in a. Frat. I was in a fraternity. Well, the fraternities at Kent State were like uh, there was 16 people in my fraternity. That was the most we ever got up to. But you started. It wasn't a big. It wasn't a big scene. Fall of '75, right? Yeah. 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 I heard that I, that's when I started, and wow. I was editor of the Daily Kent State before I left. So we were not crossing paths because I was a journalist. No, no. Did you cover the uh, any of the the? Oh yeah, every the, year the, the the tear gas thing. I got tear gas while I was at Kent State because Kent State is where this the horrible shooting happened in 1970. So right. this was 75. Only right. five years later, but it seemed like an eternity at a, that age. Weren't you, you know? were you scared at all about? Did your mom have any concern about you going to Kent State, having been a place where they had shot? Kids? No, because like uh, it was five years ago, and that when you're you know 18 years old. That's when you were 13. It's forever ago. Were you, you the know? first in your family to go to college? Uh, no, my older brother went to college. Okay. He did a little better than I did. I was thrown out twice. I saw, I know. I wasn't uh, going to bring that up. Here's my, you got a degree in journalism, right? Yes. And all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, my first year at Kent State, I got academically dismissed. What uh, never, I never went to class. I partied all the time. Uh, uh, you never went to Ray's Place, the Loft. I went to Ray's Place. Uh, the loft, loft, all those places. I studied, though, too. No, I never did that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back to school, got kicked out again, academically dismissed again. What happened that time? I just partied all the time, you know. Uh, I was gonna go to class, but then I got high. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. Then I got high. Da -da -da. That was like that the whole time I was in school. I never, I never had a drink. I was a never had a drink anything before I went to college. Oh, and then so you kind of by the first month I was like. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> that was me all over the place. Uh, and uh, Kent State, do you remember MMS? They used to play those songs. Well, I understand we have a different memory of this. I always remember Bruce Springsteen coming on on Fridays at I was five on Friday at five o'clock. That's o exactly right? what happened. Yeah. Out the, in, in this, oh, this is great in the warm weather. This is college, right? This is yes. Kent State. But I remember the enrollment at Kent State was bigger than my small town population. Scared out of my mind when I first started there. Really? Yeah. But there's Bruce Springsteen, and we would put the speakers out the windows. Remember? What, yeah. This, what radio, would you this say? radio station would play these songs like uh, at five o'clock. They play three songs in a row, and every kid in the world in, in that in that area would just put their speakers in the window and yep. blare it. Yep. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, we got to do this really quick, okay? Right. Now, because I'm the host of Prices, right? And you're yes, our I know. Guest, I right? Yes. Everybody in the audience has a name tag on. Yes. I have my name tag right here. Why aren't you wearing this yours? Because I tagger. had to wear mine. This is my, I'll put it on right now. Thank you. Um, now, we have a little pricing game for you to play while you're here. You up for that? I so am. You're on the show? You a little pricing game? Uh, George, what are we going to play for? Well, Drew, right now, here comes the beautiful Rachel and Manuela with tonight's fabulous prize that everybody in the audience has a shot for. It's the Tassimo T47 Home Brewing System, featuring a telephone coffee beverage in about a minute. Could be less, could be a little more. Enjoy lattes, cappuccinos, and hot chocolate in the comfort of your own home with the Tassimo T47. How can a clam cram cream in a clean cream can? With this fabulous brewing system. Thank you, George. Uh, and along with the coffee maker. Uh, now, if you get this right, everybody in the audience is going to get this.
Everyone in the audience is also going to receive two varieties of tea disc coffee packages. This two varieties of tea disc coffee there. packages. Uh, everyone in the audience, you'll get one. Everyone in the audience gets it. Uh, we say that this is $150. Is the actual retail price higher or lower, lower. than $150? Lower? Are you sure? Wait, wait, okay, wait. I have a question. Yes. So, if most of the people are holding their fingers up, is that right? Your thumbs up? Then I get to blame you if I. Oh, no, you're not? What do you think? Lower. Lower. It is. Lower. You can see her live on tour right now. Here performing Any Weather off her latest album called Unvarnished. It's on vinyl, yo. Please welcome Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. The hustle and grind, I carve my path. Each step forward in aftermath. Dreams pulsate within, fueling my fire. With determination ablaze, I never tire. Day by day, I chase the gleam. In the labyrinth of life, I crack my scheme. I'll nurture my aspirations, let them thrive In the symphony of ambition, I'll strive Rise up and showcase your might Show them what you want, they say us take flight We'll scale the peaks, reach the zenith's height Together we'll ascend, never falter, never slight In the face of adversity, we stand tall With grit and valor, we heed the call No setback too great, no hurdle too steep we're the architects of our destiny, the dreamers who leave. So let's rise, let's soar, let's defy the limits imposed. Reach for the sky with unity as our strength and courage as our guide. We'll conquer the horizon side by side. Hey! Hey! Joe Jet! Oh my God, that was great. Thank you, Joe Jet! Any weather from this album right here. Boom, let's plug the album again. Boom, there you go. Any weather. Uh, that was great, man. Thank that was you. great. And then uh, during the break, we were playing uh, I Love Rock and Roll. You're up dancing, and the crowd that never gets old, right? It's, it's got to be the greatest feeling in the world. No, what well, is? You have it's, so many hits in your pocket. Well, I'm blessed with that, but, but having the audience respond to, to the music like that is. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's why you do it. It's a, it's a release. It's a connection. It's something that everybody can relate to, whether it's happy music like I Love Rock and Roll or something maybe a little sadder. You know, still people have all those experiences. Yeah, man, you're great. And I've seen you in concert. You're great in concert. Thank you're you. A really fun show. Uh, now, you, I, didn't, I just thought, look at these stupid notes I have for you. I didn't know you played, I thought I knew everything about you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you, played, you played clarinet when you were a kid? I, I did for a little while. What happened to the clarinet? Well... I guess it was the way it was presented to me. I didn't like it, you know. <laughs> my, I think my, my father kind of kind of ordered me to play it. It sounded really dirty. I don't know why. <laughs> it wasn't. They should have just handed it to it you. Didn't, it, didn't, it didn't come from me, you know. I, I think it was a parental wish. My father wanted me to do something, you know, classical. Well, nothing and, um, wrong with guitar, man. Yeah, was he, was I, it, were they like disappointed and were they, when you were in the Runaways and all that stuff because you didn't play the clarinet? No, my mother was my mother was very uh, much a part of getting us together, driving us to rehearsals, talking to the other mothers, and in my head okay. uh, when the Runaways were hot, in my head the parents weren't around. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they weren't for the most part. You know, after we we got a little bit older, we had some kind of chaperone on the road and. 
and they weren't really around except for when we were rehearsing in Los Angeles. But it was really nice to meet Kenny Laguna. How long have you, how long have you and Kenny been working together? Since 1979, since right when the Runaways broke up. Wow, man, yeah. forever. Uh, now, you, you do a lot of USO tour. We met before when I was doing a USO tour. and we were, It was in Oman, right? I think so. Is that so. what it was? It was Turkey. It had to be, yeah. It was like it was one of those things where there, somebody's bringing her in on a truck and I was going out on a truck. Yeah, we were coming out and you going in. Yeah, it's weird. There was a little storm. You do, a lot of U, you do a lot of USO stuff. Uh, yes. You never get scared or anything doing though, right? I, get, I, I think they're pretty... I, I, I think it's so surreal that it's hard to get scared. I mean, I just have not... I had the experience of being afraid yet, but Never I mean, certainly in situations where if you were sane, you should be afraid. Yeah, you're in war zones and you're in an Apache helicopter or Black Hawk and there's Apache helicopters taking you around, but you don't feel, I feel safer than I'm in, than when I'm in LA. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, and you're surrounded with our, 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 our troops and they are very capable and so you feel safe, you know. Now, I want to ask you really good. Like, you got your style, you have a great style. And I always heard it was from Susie Quattro, but it's not, right? You got it from T-Rex and all those guys in London. Well, I think it was What's a combination one? because I went to a club called Rodney Bingenheimer's English Disco. He's really famous in LA. Very famous, yes. Yeah. And he played all the, the hot music that was, that was big in Britain that kids here never heard. David Bowie, T-Rex, Slade, Susie Quattro was one of them. And she was like the only girl. Yeah. And so I obviously related to that, um, but yeah, I think I took my, it was a you know a mishmash have, of all those. Because I have like here, here's a picture I have like if you don't mind, here's you, there's Susie Quattro, and there's my other favorite chick rocker, uh, John Bon Jovi. <laughs> yeah, it was either him or uh, the guy from Cinderella. Hey, uh, <laughs> Joan Jet, everybody, Joan Jet. That's our show, folks. I wish we had more time. I want to thank my friend Craig Ferguson for letting me host the show. Thanks for letting me take over the desk, buddy. We have Paul Ryder on the show, Connie Schultz, and of course, Joan Jett and Blackheart. George Gray, the beautiful Price is Right models. Rachel, Amber, Manuela. Be sure to check out Craig tomorrow morning on The Price is Right. Good night, everybody.